fiscal year. Maryland Congressman Chris Van Hollen, Democrat ranking member of the House Budget Committee, my guest now. Sir, welcome back to America's Newsroom. Morning. It's good to, to be you. with you. The Morning headline 4.6 trillion in deficit reduction over 10 years. What's wrong with that? Well, there's nothing wrong with deficit reduction. Uh, the issue is how you achieve it uh, and making sure you achieve it in a way that doesn't harm the very fragile recovery uh, right now. Uh, we will also reduce deficits so that they're not growing any faster than the economy. We'll, we will stabilize the debt, but we will not do it in a way that guts our investment in our kids' education and violates the commitments we've made to seniors, whether in Medicare or Medicaid. So it's a question of whether you take a balanced approach, which is what we, pro we proposed, or you take this lopsided, uncompromising approach, which is what we're uh, seeing all in right. the House well, Republican What Paul budget. Ryan argue is that it's not lopsided, it's not unfair. The fact that the changes in Medicare don't even take place for another 10 years. 2024. So um, you've got a decade to wait for that. And what he argues ultimately is that the government's frankly just too big. You look at the deficits right now, debts increased $6 trillion uh, in just over four years' time in the administration. Annual deficits more than a trillion dollars for each of the past four years. This is what he writes today in the Wall Street Journal. The truth is the nation's debt is a sign of overreach. Government is trying to do too much, and when government does too much, it does not do anything well. Can you argue with that? Well, as you know, when the economy was going through the tank, uh, deficits went up. They are now coming down, and the key is to make sure they come down steadily and certainly do not grow any faster than the economy. Uh, we are going to have a budget uh, that builds on the $1.5 trillion we've already cut in discretionary spending. That will be at the lowest level as the percent of the economy as during the Eisenhower administration, and that's before the impact of the sequester. So, yes. We have to tighten our belt. The issue is whether we also should close some of the tax loopholes that benefit folks at the very top in order to cushion the blow uh, to seniors and cuts to kids and cuts to important investments in our infrastructure like transportation. If you take a balanced approach, then you have, sh have shared responsibility, Bill, rather than uh, just given you know, you know folks at the very top yeah, I, I, I've, I've heard the talking points many times and I, I respect you for coming back and, and arguing this again with us today no it's not talking but, but, points no, no, it's economics, hang on it's economics. here's the question though is that how do you know where you even stand if your colleagues in the Senate haven't even shown their hand in 1400 days how was it possible to work that way well 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 number one as you know uh, the Senate Democrats will have a budget number two for the last two years, we've been operating under a Budget Control Act, which is actually has greater force of law than a simple budget resolution. I mean, the Budget Control Act was not only passed by one House of Congress, whether it's the House or the Senate, it was also signed by the President. That's been operative for the last two years. Now we're moving into a new cycle, and we will go into a, a situation where you have uh, House and Senate acting. But, Bill, don't, don't belittle, you know, statements by calling them so-called talking points. This, this infects people's lives. Uh, and the reality is, if you take the budget the way uh, the Republicans in the House are presenting it, it will have a drag on the economy right now. That's not according to me. That's according to the independent, nonpartisan well, congressional because budget Because it makes office. the government healthier? No, no not because it makes it <laughs> Bill, because of the very steep and immediate cut uh, in government spending in the areas that it's, they're targeting uh, will result, according to the Congressional Budget Office, in 750,000 well, fewer we, we, jobs we just, just by the, the end of this year. We just laid out the case that Ryan's making is that it's not cuts in spending, it's cuts in the increase of spending. This Actually, is, all, in this that, is, this is Bill, also in what he writes category, today in the Wall Street Journal. Bill, the you can tell me what he wrote. I, I read his article. I got you, but, 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 but this is but, important. But, this is important no, because this goes right this to the politics this of Washington. Is Hang on. Bill, Hang if you're I'll ask the question, then I'll allow you answer. I'm going to answer your question. Because this is the point, sir. I will answer other side question. will demagogue this issue. Yeah. But remember, and, 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 anyone and reading, who attacks reading, our Medicare proposal without offering a credible alternative is complicit in the program's demise. That goes right that, to okay. the point Can that I, we're having yes, right it, now. It, Your it actually does. Can I answer you now, Bill? You may. What did, what did uh, Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney do in the last presidential election? They demagogued the $715 billion in Medicare savings that was part of Obamacare. You remember that, don't you? That was $715 billion in savings in 10 years. They have nowhere close to that amount of savings in their 10-year window, and yet you know what they did? They took every penny of those savings that they ran against. 
those savings that they demagogued. Uh, so it's really interesting to hear you talk about hard decisions when they campaigned against those savings, and now they're using those savings in their budget uh, let, to let, hit let balance. Get, let me Isn't get that one, interesting? Let me get to one more. You point find that here. interesting? Let me get to one they're more. They're also point using here. the tax get, revenue. Please, they're also using the tax please, revenue they campaigned with against. Due, with all due respect, Congressman, is now the time that Washington can do a grand bargain? Do you believe yes. it's possible or not? I do. I do. If, if, if people are willing to compromise. Uh, and, I, you know, you heard uh, Chairman Ryan himself say the other day on national television that he didn't think that, you know, the big parts of his plan would fly. Well, that's right. Uh, so if they're willing to compromise, if they're willing to take a balanced approach, the same kind of approach that bipartisan fiscal commissions have recommended in terms of the split between revenue and cuts, then there's a path forward. If they're going to insist on doing this simply by